Helga from Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking and today we're going to make raisin filled cookies. This is an old recipe that's been in my family a long time. Uh, this came from my great great aunt I believe. I remember having these as a kid and just loved them. I don't make them very often. I actually haven't made them in years and years uh, because Mike's not a big raisin person but he actually does like these. And you can use the same uh, recipe, just change up the fillings with blueberry or cherry, which are some of Mike's favorites. Uh, so they're just a great basic uh, filled cookie recipe. Um, one of the things I'm going to show you before we get started here is uh, a little hack. And yes, we're not in my kitchen today, we're out at Mike's mom's. We're going to do these together. Um, so she'll be in on this later. Let me show you a hack. Uh, for making buttermilk. This recipe calls for buttermilk and let's face it, most people don't have buttermilk on hand and this saves a trip to the store and not even all stores have it anymore. So this is really simple. You can make as much as you need or as little as you need and uh, it's a good hack to have in your toolbox anytime a recipe calls for buttermilk. Okay, so the easy buttermilk hack is you can take lemon juice or vinegar roughly uh, one tablespoon and I usually use lemons I always have lemons on hand so I'll squeeze a lemon in here that's roughly actually half a lemon's pretty much a tablespoon so half a lemon in here and then you fill the one cup measure up the rest of the way with milk and you let that sit five minutes and uh, then you've got buttermilk to use for a recipe. Uh, this recipe only calls for like three tablespoons so that's what we'll use out of it but uh, this is really great for when you're baking and just don't have it or can't get it quickly. What we're going to do is uh, cream our, our butter and sugar. Sugars, it's a cup of uh, butter and a cup of brown sugar and a cup of uh, white sugar. And as always, I will include um, the recipe in the description down below so you have it for reference. So let's get this creamed. And then we'll start adding our eggs one at a time. Spoons of vanilla. The dry ingredients, which is the flour, uh, baking soda, and baking powder, which I had already pre measured out here. I'm going to add that in. Um, that was a uh, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, five cups of all-purpose flour, and a quarter teaspoon of either nutmeg or cinnamon, your choice. I'm using cinnamon today. And uh, half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix that in and uh, alternate it then with the buttermilk. And just so you can see here, Look how this is already thickened right up into, into nice buttermilk. So we'll add three tablespoons of that along the way here. Okay, I just gave this a, a mix and then I'm just going to add my flour in here. A couple of batches. So there's one. And we'll let it mix.
Okay, that's all mixed. And I'm going to put this in a bowl. And we're going to cover it and put it in the fridge. So the dough chills down, so it's good to roll out. Okay, so here's the uh, dough. By the way, it tastes really good. You know, because I was sampling already. Anyway, here's the dough. We're going to put that in the fridge to cool, and then we're going to work on our raisin filling. First, I'm going to combine uh, a cup of brown sugar, and then a tablespoon of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of flour. Then I'm going to add two cups of water. I'll give this a good stir so we get the uh, flour and cornstarch incorporated in before we bring it on the heat because then we're going to bring it up to a boil. We have this stirred in get it smooth. Now I'm going to add my raisins, half a cup of raisins, fruitless raisins. All right. Now I'm going to put this on the stove and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, uh, we're going to stir it while it's at a low boil for three minutes. Okay, it's just coming to a boil, so the three minutes start now. Okay, so here you can see, you can see the raisins plumped up, and we have our sauce and it thickened up nice, and that's going to be our filling. Uh, we'll check on our dough, make sure it's chilled down enough to work, and uh, roll that out and get these going. Okay, so my dough is chilled nicely. You see how it comes away from the pan like that? And um, I'm going to just kind of do this in half here at a time so that we have more room. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour. We'll work on rolling her out. Now, the recipe actually calls for it to be a quarter inch thick, but uh, honestly, I like mine, and so does Mike. He likes his, uh, we like him more doughy, so I'm probably going to have a little bit thicker than that. Okay, now the next part. Have parchment paper um, line sheet here, and we're gonna cut these out. And uh, I mean, you can use. I actually have a donut cookie cutter at home. I didn't think to bring it with me, but uh, doesn't matter because this cup is about the right size, and uh, I'm just gonna do cutouts with it. So that's the thing, you know, you can use whatever you have on hand. You don't need fancy stuff. See how nice that works? You can see the disc that it makes. So I've got the tops cut out over here. Now comes the filling part. So see my raisin filling. And we're just going to put a little bit in the middle of these. Not like that, right? Yeah, and just make sure they're. So this first part's an experiment. Uh, we crimped some finger-wise, and now we're crimping some with the, the fork-wise. I've seen both done, so I guess we'll see which turns out better uh, so that uh, we don't have major leakage. The other thing is, is uh, 
we cut a little slit at the top for the steam to get out. And then we stick it in the oven at 350 for around, uh, what was it? I think it's 10 to 13 minutes. 10 to 13 minutes. So, so this is our first tray. See how we make out. Here are the first ones out of the oven. And you see, you know, here's the size of my hand. So you can see these make pretty big, pretty big cakes, pretty big uh, cookies. Okay, so I got one out. It's cooled. And I want you to just see baking it at 350, the, the light is just set light golden color but what a nice cake that makes and uh, we're going to give it a try I'm all ready for the moment of truth mom yep <laughs> so there's the inside you can see the filling Is a really nice cookie. Mm. Oh my god, that is really good. This is a winner, guys. This is just as good as I remember when I was a kid. And like I said, you can use cherry filling or blueberry filling. Um, I recommend the stronger flavored uh, fruits for that, like apple and peach. Um, I don't think would have as much flavor with with the cookie part, but like cherry and blueberry or um, Blackberry, or raspberry, brambleberry, any of those would probably be awesome. So, mm. those are the cookies, raisin filled cookies. <clears throat> this is an old German recipe that was in my family. So, uh, definitely Moorish. So, thanks for coming along. Join me next time on Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking. You liked what you saw? Like, subscribe, and join me next time here in Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking.